Hi everyone, I'm John Padron, Solutions Architect and CGIS Compliance Specialist at DSM. Welcome to our four-part series on CGIS Compliance in the Cloud. My goal for this series of videos is to help you navigate a subject that is widely known among criminal justice and law enforcement agencies, but not always fully understood. I'll be discussing CGIS Compliance as it applies to the state of Florida, but many, if not most, of the topics do apply to all states. For this introductory session, I'll be going over the following topics. What is CGIS? CGIS terms and history. How is CGIS organized? Which organizations need to comply with CGIS? And lastly, what is CGI? So what is CGIS? Established in the early 1990s, CGIS short for Criminal Justice Information Systems is a division of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI CGIS is essentially the main information hub for FBI, which provides tools and services to the law enforcement, national security intelligence organizations and general public in the United States. Some of these resources include NCIC, IAFIS, NICS, UCR, and lastly, the Law Enforcement National Data Exchange, NDEX. CGIS security policy provides criminal justice agencies and non-criminal justice agencies with a minimum set of security requirements for access to FBI CGIS division systems and information to protect and safeguard criminal justice information, CGI. The purpose of the policy is to provide the controls necessary to protect CGI from creation through distribution between agencies and organizations sharing of this data. The CGIS security policy is managed through a shared responsibility model by the FBI Advisory, Policy Board, and each state's CGIS systems agency. The CSA for Florida is the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The CSA is responsible for establishing and administering an information technology program throughout the CSA's user community to include local levels. The head of the CSA appoints a CGIS system officer, CSO. If they choose to, the CSA has the ability to impose more rigorous protections on CGI than outlined by the FBI's minimum requirements. In addition, the CSO ensures the appointment of an information security officer, a terminal agency coordinator, and lastly, a local agency security officer, LASSO, at each agency having access to CGI. Next, let's discuss which agencies and organizations must comply with CGIS security policy, starting with CJAs, criminal justice agencies. They include municipal police departments, county sheriffs, state, attorney off state attorney's offices, court administrators, and state and federal inspector general's offices. Then there's the NCJAs. They include city governments, county governments, school boards, and other public educational institutions. So, if you're a CJA or NCJA, do you have to arbitrarily comply with CJA's policy? The answer is no. Unless you have direct access to store, process, or transmit CJI, you don't have to adhere to CJA's policy requirements. So what is CJI? CJI obtained from the FBI systems includes the following biometric data, identity history data, biographical data, property data, and lastly, case or incident history. So law enforcement and criminal justice agencies use CGI as part of this mission to, re to research crime, force laws, and prepare for prosecution. But what do non-criminal justice agencies use CGI for? Most often, they use the data for performing background checks during the hiring process. Well, that's it for our introduction to CGIS. Next time, join me for a technical deep dive while I discuss common CGIS requirements, interagency agreements, and policies needed to meet compliance. See you then.